In this video, we're going to talk about a few simple tips to optimize your computer and speed up your overall trading experience. What's up, everybody? It's Eddie Z here from Easy Trading Computers, and you're watching Trading Computer Secrets. One complaint I hear from traders all the time is, my data seems to flash or burst on and off during extremely volatile markets and around news events. Sometimes my data and my computer even freezes. How can I make this stop happening? Well, let me tell you, this is a great question. Essentially, there are three keys to preventing data bursts, data delays, eliminating slippage, preventing freezes, and improving your overall data speed experience and your trading experience. The first key is having a lightning fast and the most up-to-date processor a processor that has a benchmark score of at least 25,000 or higher is an absolute must. If you want to run a benchmark test on the computer that you are currently using for trading right now and get its benchmark score, then go to easytradingcomputers.net forward slash CPU after you finish watching this video and I'll walk you through it. The second key to optimal speed is having plenty of RAM, that is random access memory. At the very least you want 16 gigabytes. The third key element is having the fastest and most stable internet connection that's available in your area. So let's talk about internet connection speed. In my opinion, the absolute lowest acceptable speeds are 50 megabits per second download speed and 50 megabits per second upload speed. And these are minimums, and faster is always better. These are very low numbers, but they are minimums for trading. We want numbers like 100 to 200 to 500 megabits per second download, or 100 to 200 to 500 megabits per second upload. So how do you run a speed test? You simply click the tool that's right underneath this video. So right here is our internet speed test and in the middle there's a big green go button. Go ahead and click that, allow the tool to, to load, and then allow it to take its measurements. Now it's taking its measurements now. The first number you'll see here is something called the ping. The ping is the reaction time of your connection. In other words, how quickly your device gets a response after you have sent out a request. It's kind of like if you call somebody, it's when the other person actually answers the phone and says hello. That's the ping. Now when it comes to trading, we want to see a ping under 100 milliseconds. Anything below 50 milliseconds is excellent, very, very fast, and when you get under 20, that's a very, very good sign. But we can tolerate up to about 100. Once you get over 100, that's going to be below average. You're going to run into some trouble trading. Now, the second number we just came up with is something called the jitter or jitter frequency. And it's a measure of the variability in the ping over time. In other words, how stable is this ping? If the ping is not stable, you will have issues if you're streaming a movie or if you're streaming live trading data. This is very important. So for jitter, we really want to see it be under 30 milliseconds. If your number creeps up higher than that, you're not going to be able to maintain your real-time data stream in real time. It's going to burst on and off. There might be some delays and inconsistencies. And that could be enough to throw off your whole trading methodology. Now obviously the big numbers we're looking at here are the download speed, in my case 945.5 megabits per second, and my upload speed 946 megabits per second. So in my area, I'm able to get almost one gigabit of data upload and download. Again, please don't cheap out. Do not get 20 megabits per second download speed and 20 megabits per second per second upload just to save a few bucks, you are going to have issues trading. Very, very important. My suggestion to you is that you call your internet service provider and request the highest speed available and that you can afford. Please don't cheap out and settle for a lower speed just to save 20 or 30 bucks a month. 
if your provider tells you you can't get at least 50 megabits per second, go find a new provider. These days, you should be able to get 50, 100, or even 1,000 megabits per second download speeds. For some people, unfortunately, you may only have a few choices, like DSL from the phone company or maybe high speed from the cable company. Some people think that 4G or now the new 5G from the cell phone companies is an option due to their advertised speeds. But according to digitaltrends.com, the average 4G network is only 15 megabits per second. And the average 5G network so far is only about 50 megabits per second. Another option, satellite internet is pretty slow also in most cases. Three and a half to five megabits per second. Elon Musk's Starlink promises to solve the satellite problem, but that also remains to be seen. The biggest issue with satellites is line of sight. And even Starlink's website says, if any object such as a tree, chimney, pole, etc. interrupts the path of the beam, even briefly, your internet service will be interrupted. This doesn't sound stable enough to trade with to me. Okay, so now you have a brand new computer and you have tons of RAM and you have the fastest CPU and you've purchased 100 megabits per second download from your cable company and you're still getting data bursts and intermittent data. How can this be? Believe it or not, this even happened to me and the answer is in the final mile. The wiring from the telephone pole or the pedestal outside your house or your office to your computer. It could be that the wiring took a lightning strike and damaged the line or even damaged a splitter like this. If the wiring in your house is old, it wasn't really designed for high-speed data transmission or most probably that wire degraded substantially over the years. So call your provider and have them check the entire final mile. Sometimes having too many lines splitting from the main line can also cause a drop in signal. So there are many, many things that can happen in that final mile, and you may need to have all of the wiring replaced. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please go ahead and download our complete guide to trading computers by clicking the link below. This guide is jam-packed with great tips so you can totally optimize your trading experience. My name's Eddie Z, and I'll see you in the very next video.